Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Forever Forward podcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, uh, a very important category of uh, software buyer when you look at the smart building space, uh, right? Which is the large enterprises, the multi location accounts, or in some of the cases, as they're called, as global service accounts. And I have today with, the way, with me a very good friend of mine, um, uh, Alex. He heads customer success at Schneider Electric. Uh, uh, to talk about 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 the the trends, uh, what's driving the demand in terms of uptake of of software uh, by enterprise customers, uh, large enterprise customers, as far as built environment is concerned. But before we get started, uh, Alex, thank you so much for making time out to come onto our podcast. Uh, would you like to say hello to our listeners? Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I know it's, there's a lot of uh, different audience following uh, this podcast series, so um, do subscribe and follow, please, like my, uh, my I, I have done. And thank you, Yumas. Uh, good to see you, as always, again, and uh, thank you for this invitation. Thanks so much, uh, Alex. This was on our on on our list on my bucket list for so long. So I'm happy that we uh, we get to strike this off. But uh, uh, again, you know, before we build up on the scope of the topic and stuff, Alex, why don't you give uh, our listeners a perspective of everything you've done in the past and everything that's led to the role that you're currently doing at uh, playing at Schneider Electric? Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Yumas. Um, so um, I'm from uh, Hong Kong originally. Uh, and now the, um, I'm uh, the past two years are now the physically the relocated and based in London, UK. Um, and then uh, my background is super boring, but uh, I will I will start anyway. Sixty seconds like that. Okay. So the, um, okay. I um, I have a background in uh, USG consulting myself after graduated uh, with a degree from uh, London. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I get the degree is I got to go back to Hong Kong and start my career in APEC. Right. That that's that was the history. And uh, so yes, I I have been the past a little bit like eighteen years. I've been the, mostly from with the ESG sustainability consulting background. And even at that time, a lot of the customer the industry do not even label them as sustainability. And so ESG, different things, right. as right. you can imagine, right? So the EHS, health and safety, environmental audit, the, the data management, ESG reporting, then moving to renewable and different sort of like the full blown sustainability right. uh, uh, movement industry in the corporate world, as you may. Um, and then um, I have a privilege then uh, uh, in 2013, uh, joining the uh, Schneider Electric uh, and started the journey with this company, with a lot of our customers and partners mm. uh, on the digital transformation, the digital journey, the sustainability, decarbonization, um, uh, you know, projects and programs with a lot of our different customers. Mm. And I'm very glad that you mentioned uh, uh, enterprise uh, customers and right. how we are supporting them. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that we will be the, doing some uh, deep dive a little bit during, during mm. this, uh, this series. But um, I think uh, for, for now, especially the past two, three years, mm. so long story short, my current role is more focused, as Schneider Electric is more focused on how to... Um, uh, support a customer after they have decided to make the decision to work with uh, us on the right mix of uh, uh, technology and software mm. and solutions. Mm. So what's next? So basically customer success uh, is a big term, but um, I will explain a little bit later on uh, mm. if necessary. But that basically it all boils down to how you hold hands together with the customers after they make the purchase decision and right. the next two, three years or longer, how right. to partner together to help them to get the values from using the technology innovation faster. Mm. Uh, so mix the our IM makes the return on investment really, really better for, for them and, mm. and to, to continue this partnership. And then that will involve a lot of things uh, that we will discuss along the way. Perfect. So that's me, basically. Um, uh, maybe uh, two quick points, also a little bit uh, background to add some color to my boring profile. Um, uh, as if uh, my wife said that uh, my day job is not busy enough, so that I also that when I have some time, I'm, I'm very interested in doing some pro bono mentoring uh, for some tech startup and uh, innovators uh, like yourself. I would say it, uh, mentoring is a very big word, and for me, it's more like uh, for an opportunity for me to learn from you guys rather than I 
can give back to to, to the, the not much to back in. But I have the privilege of doing this kind of uh, interaction with all the tech innovators okay. in APEC and also now in Europe. Mm. And then on top of that, that because of my UK uh, education background, blah blah. So mm. I have been following football a little bit, and um, I know it can be very it creates some interesting debate when talk about football and sports in general. But I've been an Arsenal fans for twenty five years. Um, football, football to me doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'm more of a cricket <laughs> person, but I can kind of really understand yeah, you having your your education in UK and, and and falling in love with football. But on the mentoring part, I mean that's very interesting, and the audience must know that's how I actually met Alex. Uh, you know, in one of the uh, events that we both were part of in in London, and that's how I started to to know him so and and you're right uh, uh, alex I, I must tell you that that mentoring sometimes seems to be a very uh, you know a very heavy lifting kind of a word but i think mostly it's it's just the conversations you do just just like the ones that we've had go actually a long way in helping people so thank you for doing that man and i hope you keep yeah, on absolutely. doing that uh, i hope you one day make that as your day job and not as 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 a as as a hobby but but a decade at Schneider electrics i'm sure you would have seen a lot uh, uh, you know, uh, any 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 particular thing that comes to your mind? I mean, I mean, or maybe I'll just rephrase the question. Do you think that the best is yet to come? That's a great question, uh, and I think yes. The answer is uh, there's some more interesting, exciting things to come in terms of the, mm. um, the not only the innovation, and we know that the innovation won't, won't stop. Right. And whenever there's a there's a use case, whenever there's a new uh, 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 customer needs, mm. um, and then there are pe smart people who basically will come up uh, with all, all the amazing ideas mm. to put in practice. But I, I also think uh, it's also boils down to a number of different things. Is that um, we also see the especially the past few years um, a lot of uh, mega trends that are disrupting and affecting the different industry. Uh, in terms of, for example, the, um, let me take an example, like um, uh, if you look at the way that after the pandemic, mm. different regions, when we're talking about uh, whether you are the office owners, occupiers, mm. or like the uh, global enterprise uh, customers who have, uh, you know, hundreds of office locations globally. Across the world, yeah, places, yeah. Right? And and, and it, they all face a similar uh, a dilemma, like uh, how we can get uh, all this... Uh, amazing employees return to the office is that they have been paying the rent, investing a lot, right? Mm -hmm. How to enhance the productivity uh, in mm -hmm. terms of the office uh, space usage, but at the same time also respect the fact that after the pandemic, everybody's turned to hybrid mode of working, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it has changed. So so, so sometimes we, uh, uh, not only at my company, but I, I mean in the whole technology Not ecosystem. We need mm. to think about this kind of big questions and how to answer it. Actually. So Sorry, you're saying, a bit too long. No, no, it makes sense. So you, what you're essentially saying, and probably will, as you rightly also probably said, we'll dive into some of these trends a little deeper. But what you're, what I hear from you is that because there is there has been a marked change or a, a tectonic shift in how uh, you know real estate has been up, real estate works. You know that's probably exciting. So let's let's dive deeper into 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 oh. so, and I'll probably go forward with my first question. Uh, your role is obviously global in nature, which means you have the opportunity to interact with customers from different regions. Are you seeing any, what are the key drivers of growth or let's say the pain points that your customers often talk to you about? I mean, the large enterprises and global customers. What are some of the common uh, themes that you see emerging from your discussions? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think, um, of course, uh, even the same customer who have, uh, you know, portfolios across the world, mm. uh, they will have different cultures. They have to meet different, uh, let's mm. say, regulation or compliance needs and things like that um, in different countries or regions. But I think it's uh, points down to uh, uh, four key challenges to it that we're seeing with our customers, especially from the building and real estate industry, okay, mm. that uh, Shine mm. Electric has been uh, uh, yeah, focusing and supporting yeah. a lot. So first and foremost is um, the need to drive a sustainability and net zero carbon goals for the mm. portfolios quicker and smarter, right? Because as we know, the big picture is 40% 40, 40 of the world's CO2 emissions comes mainly from the building sector. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that 30% of the energy waste uh, is, uh, is uh, you can find in the building uh, operation, which may also means that if you turn the side of the coin from wastage into opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see that there's also the massive uh, 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 space for improvement and, and, and uh, benefits if you do things right. Yeah. And also we see that um, especially the um, the economic situation the past uh, year, uh, the energy crisis in Europe uh, following the uh, geopolitical uh, challenges uh, in, in, in Ukraine and, and, and things like that. We see that uh, more and more of our uh, real estate and commercial uh, office customers also the focus a lot on resilience in the operation. Not only just cost cutting, but also at the same time, how to support their already uh, far-fetched uh, FM team mm. to do the job right, while at the same time not uh, burn out them so easily. Because you will also see uh, in some of our customers, uh, like the FM service providers, we also see the, the trend that the, some of the very experienced talents are uh, also uh, starting to say, I quit because uh, it's too much to do, too little time. Not uh, not enough uh, uh, oh. technology and support. Is it okay for me to pick you on the resilience? Because I think uh, uh, that's a very interesting point. Sustainability probably was not a no brainer and that's zero because that's been on the trend. But I'm surprised that resilience makes it to the top, like the top of the list. And and you mentioned that. So is it is it the asset owners or the your customers driving that and saying that hey we want our service provider to be more resilient because it most of your customers will have outsourced FM providers, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they would not be insourcing it, uh, or or there are people who do it in sourcing as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You're, you're spot on, Imes, uh, because um, it's, I would say it's the exception than the rule that um, the asset owners or occupiers uh, do not use any FM partners hmm. for managing their the workspace and, and, and facilities, right? And um, we, we are talking, I'm not an expert in the FM industry. I just learned with uh, with them, right? And but um, all this discussion around SLA, all this uh, uh, discussion uh, around how how to how to bridge the gap between the expectation of of the asset owners and the as the user of the FM service versus what the FM service providers have been facing all this challenge of managing all these different work orders, how to meet the expectation mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and 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 and. On budget, on time is always a challenge, right? And on top of that, I talked about sustainability, energy efficiency, and resilience in operation. But maybe the uh, there's also another area, especially the uh, pertaining to the real estate industry, is about uh, how to support your people who are using the workspaces, right? And we know that um, ninety percent of the time we're spending indoor either at home or most of the time in offices as well, mm. right? Mm. So how to look at uh, look after your employees, uh, your occupants' well-being while they are, you know, using the workspace indoor, mm. but also at the same time for especially uh, enterprise uh, customers that we're supporting, they're also asking increasingly at, at us, like um, how the technology or the way we're managing the uh, digital the journey mm. can bring benefits to engage the employees and, and occupiers more. And what sort time. of engagement are we talking about? I mean, because there is, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the three points that you've so far listed down is more on the back end operations, maintenance kind of things, right? This becomes the main mm -hmm. thing. So, what kind of experiences have you been, been like, where people say, or the conversation that you've had is what kind of experiences have they been talking about, about just transforming it for their occupants? Right. So, um, well, uh, without boring your audience too much with the details and not naming the names uh, of our customers, but I think uh, we are seeing like uh, the past 12 to uh, 18 months in US alone, we see a lot of our cust uh, banking and finance uh, uh, customers who have also mm -hmm. uh, owned and rented yeah, a lot of yeah. their workspaces. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they want, because they, because they want to bring and invite the, uh, the employees back to work right. more. Right. together face to face at their offices so uh, we also come up with uh, the uh, support around uh, building some uh, enterprise level mobile app which right. basically uh, link also to a lot of the digital and physical services Got that um, they are providing in the workspace like uh, 
Then you can check the restaurant lunch menu at the office. They can book the gyms. They can book the rooms. They can find uh, where 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 the uh, most preferred uh, uh, colleagues, uh, which floor and which uh, spaces they are working this morning. Can I pre-book a, a, a parking lot mm. when I drive to work, et cetera, et cetera. And also uh, more on top of that, uh, oh. that uh, we... We do the kind of um, uh, support the kind of employee employee engagement program through mm. technology. That's interesting. And you mentioned about the customers of the US and you operate in multiple regions, uh, not just, I mean, Stand is obviously truly global, but uh, so are you seeing any differences in terms of uh, the priority of these points in the in the UK, across Europe, US, APAC, or Middle East? Uh, any differences? What's, what's like number one on the agenda or any starting difference that you see between trends between two different regions, or it's kind of fairly the same everywhere. Yeah, that, that's a great question, right? Um, I I would say it, um the some of these key challenges are uh, more or less the same across regions. Okay, mm -hmm. so cost uh, uh, optimization, the energy efficiency, but um, we also see the different ways uh, depending on the culture, depending on the tradition, how they manage this kind of challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. across the regions, which is very interesting. Right. And I can give you some uh, numbers. Like, uh, again, when we look back to the uh, office occupancy trends after the pan pandemic, mm. so I, I, I come across some uh, study from uh, uh, Vertandix or CBRE recently looking at, the, for example, in US, mm. the office uh, occupancy rate just uh, back to like 40 to 60%. But if you look at, for example, back to Europe, or UK mm. uh, in, in specific, is around 7 to 90%, depending, of course, on cities and mm. also on what types of uh, office buildings. Are you talking but about in Asia Pac, like Singapore or uh, Hong Kong, where I'm originally from, the occupancy rate up, go up back to uh, 80%, or, or in some cases, even to uh, more than 100%. So all these numbers uh, sound number, numbers, but so if you look... Trends, look yeah. Hmm. If you look at, uh, think about the implication for how to manage all these workspaces in different regions. So in US, the challenge for, 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 for the customers to how to enhance the occupancy, right? Hmm. Or should I rationalize the, the spaces that I'm renting and investing over the next few years? Whereas in Singapore and Hong Kong, for example, they are over occupied, right? And for, you them can, it's an, you, for them, it's a question of expanding. I mean, or, or probably maybe again, rationalizing in a different manner. Uh, in a different manner, you, you're absolutely right, and and also the how how that uh, over occupying. I cannot find a desk uh, any day in the week. I'm so frustrated. I need to work at, at downstairs at the Starbucks. That that sort of things is also relating back to the uh, employee engagement and productivity. Got it. Got it. Right? Got it. So that's so very sense. interesting. That makes sense. I mean, I, I'm I'm assuming Middle East wouldn't have problem on energy cost and stuff. I mean, um, uh, and resiliency. I mean, any any inputs on that? Or you see, they, no. they, they'll be high on sustainability for sure. Yeah, I think, um, um, again, I I also need to the, rely on the, our uh, colleagues in the in that uh, Middle East agent to like Dubai and, and to mm. give more insights to me. Um, mm. But no, I, I think um, they are uh, moving into uh, also very serious about the decarbonization, net zero carbon uh, okay. targets okay. for sure. Hmm. Uh, but of course, they 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 are not like us in Europe. They're, they're I mean, they, the but, but, but to accept part, I think the, the the question of the moral campus of compass of looking at energy either could be from the cost perspective or from emissions. But one way or the other, it's there because they are so closely linked to each other. So moving on to the second Definitely. question. Thanks so much for the 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 details. Is are there any barriers to adopt? So when you talk to the, the enterprises, obviously they are sophisticated because they, as you rightly said, they have multiple buildings, portfolio. Some are owned, some are leased, uh, but but very diverse portfolios. What, what What's the barrier that comes across to, to adoption of technology? Uh, like, is it a technology, technology barrier? Or what sort of barrier like do you come across? Yeah, I, I think um, uh, this different... Um challenges that impacting the uh, uh, the way that uh, the customers are adopting uh, new innovations right mm. but um i think also beside beside the course and whether or not this uh, fit the use cases uh by adopting the different solutions i think uh, 
some are very pragmatic day-to-day uh, -to -day kind of a consideration that um, we also the, sometimes say, oh, this is uh, actually something that we need to help the customers to resolve in the first place before we propose something new. So mm -hmm. let's let's put, for example, how for the CTO of our customers, most of the time when we start talking about how to digitalize workplaces with new softwares or, or solution and things like that with Schneider, mm -hmm. uh, they also usually will say, but but come on, I have to also rationalize the, the way we uh, have already invested in a lot of different IT solutions. Got it. And the number of uh, software licenses, for example, are already putting like a legacy kind of expenses mm. Uh, mm. before the company. So mm -hmm. how to rationalize it, okay, from a cost, not only from a cost standpoint for the CTO or the CIO, but also um, how to manage how do I help my team to manage it, uh, you know, efficiently? All these different, uh, you know, solution. So I think that's also the very important lesson for us, and uh, we also find ways to how to how to support them. But in general, I think um, across region we also see um, the um, increasing trends for these uh, uh, executives uh, on the C level, uh, understanding and believing in the values of uh, the digitalization. Mm. Uh, for for the workplaces for the facilities, and I think uh, some industry beside commercial real estate, we also see other sec sectors like healthcare, uh, retail, logistics, mm. as well as data centers are also uh, moving really fast in those spaces. Like uh, how we can even digitalize this very small workflows for mm. my workers and my employees to enhance the productivity and, and make sure that, that these talents will think, okay, the company is continually investing for mm. us, mm. with us, mm. uh, so that uh, they can also up, keep on upskilling and then keeping the best talents with, with them. That makes sense. Makes sense. So that's it. And, and you haven't, you mentioned a lot of others from commercial real estate. Is manu I, I'm assuming you guys also must be working with a lot of manufacturing driven uh, companies or enterprises which are manufacturing based but they end up having a lot of portfolio of their real estate as well uh, or manufacturing facilities I mean but I think pre I presume the adoption of technology must be easier for them because they've already deployed uh, probably better technology or at scale in their manufacturing locations is that has that been your I mean that's that's what I've heard from a lot of FM companies who uh, work with manufacturing customers as well versus let's say uh, banking and finance they say that the, the the manufacturing companies understand reliability, resilience, so on and so forth better because of their background or to what they've been doing much better. Is that what your uh, you know sort of experience or observation has been as well? Well, I think that's uh, that's a good point you mentioned. Um, but also sometimes uh, I I think uh, uh, I am also guilty of uh, making some assumptions about mm. oh commercial industry must be commercial world must be different with manufacturing or industry in terms of adopting Or that technology. individual might be, but that individual may be learned. Yeah. I mean, they may be spending right. a lot of time. Got it. Makes sense. That's an interesting, yeah. interesting point. I mean, I never thought that it could be a bias as well. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I mean, for sure, because the uh, manufacturing industry has been uh, adopting, for example, automation technology for, for decades. Process right? automation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Process automation. But uh, what my team and, and I focus on more is about the enterprise level, the software adoption. Okay. That, for example, how to, how, how to use instead of a physical batch, how to use a digital batch to enter the factories or offices every day. And, and at the back end, how, how the HR, how the workplace, the change management team of the customer side can use this data to, to do the analytics, to get insights. So is um, um even in a factory that use already a lot of tech, uh, softwares and, and digital uh, uh, solutions uh, for the processes. This right. kind of enterprise uh, solution can be very new and new, yeah, new really kind of challenge. For them. And again, yeah, so I think, no, this is very well said, Alex. I think we can we can split the ones more operational and, and engineering heavy, they know it, but the, it's the other end of the spectrum, which may be new for them. And probably something that commercial real estate knows better than, than them. That's very interesting. Now, moving on to the part I consider is probably going to be the most interesting part where I put you in a spot of bother, uh, maybe, right? So obviously your, you said that your role is largely helping customers get the most out of, of I mean, help them succeed, right? Now, right. is that 
using only Schneider Electric's product portfolio or you're saying, okay, no, I mean, that's that's not the approach. It's an open world. What what you focus on is in saying, okay, if the customer problem is XYZ, let's focus on how best it can be solved. So how are you looking at collaboration with ecosystem partners, with uh, uh, with startups? What's, what's the view? I think, again, that's a, that's a great question. And um, I think uh, what we have learned the past decade in terms of building this kind of innovation for our customer is that we need to partner in everything we do, okay? Mm. Yes, for sure, um, uh, we have our own core competency and strengths in many, right. many different areas, right? Uh, uh, but we are very proud of it. But at the same time, let, let me give you uh, some examples and numbers as well. Like, mm. uh, especially in the past uh, five, six years, we um, have been, at Schneider Electric have been building uh, a, a a really, uh, you know, but uh, buzzing kind of uh, tech ecosystem. So we have, for example, more than uh, six uh, six hundred five uh, fifty thousand service providers and partners worldwide. Hmm. We work with uh, more than forty five thousand uh, system integrators and and technology developers together for our customers' uh, projects. Uh, we have also built uh, through what we call Stein Electric Exchange, which is basically, uh, as I mentioned with right. you last time, is right. an online technology ecosystem community marketplace that we work with th- uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, amazing tech startups and in, in a way innovators like yourself that uh, uh, we, we can, you know, brainstorm different ideas. And then th- exactly what we believe, because we're talking about more and more the the the, the synchronization or orchestration of different technologies and uh, the, the domain expertise like AI, machine learning, cybersecurity, uh, efficiency, uh, mm. microgrid, different things, right? To meet increasingly complicated uh, customer use cases and needs. But so you're basically saying it's, it's, it's now probably ingrained that it's not a one person or a one company do it all. It's like someone's going to spearhead, but there are going to be a lot of other solution providers who are going to ultimately uh, provide the solution to the to the to the end customer and and, and that's that's yeah yeah absolutely and we have uh, also internally have uh, amazing cto teams all these are uh, our own schneider experts who understand how to work with all these uh, uh, partners to, to to build the right uh, cases and products so yeah oh, makes sense no yeah you did it well you you did not get into the sort of bother uh, but maybe another question to put you slightly in an uncomfortable note. I mean, that's just, just my way of doing it. Okay. Now, the other question is, obviously, we've spoken a lot about the trends that are there from the supply side, which means what your customers are wanting, right? And then there are, you have on the, on, on, I mean, on the demand side, I'm sorry, but on the supply side, you have technology providers like yours, your competitors, your peer group, and then you also have, uh, you know, startups, correct? Are you seeing any mismatch between what people expect and what what companies are delivering, or you're saying this is natural? It happens. I mean, what's your view? Yeah, I can only give my two cents because uh, it's a is a is a is a big topic, right? Mm. And um and 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 the the technology landscape uh, keep mm. evolving over time. Correct. Same. The customer expectation are also um changing. Mm. Uh, and com- and become more complex uh, over time. So uh, maybe let me give a, a quick example. Like um, when when I mentioned earlier that um, uh, Ashna Electric will also have started to build some of the uh, employee engagement mm. capabilities for our mm. enterprise customers through the mobile app application. Mm. This is not happening. This, it doesn't exist like uh, even you know t- five ten years ago, right? right. Uh, that uh, you think. What Schneider Electric uh, can either doing this, either doing mobile, app, yeah, yeah. But we have been doing this for for quite some times now, uh, because uh, as as you as you uh, say, um, there's always a mismatch, right, in in, in, in uh, between the tech landscape and the customer needs. But this is exactly where we create demand, create the needs, create the innovation together, and fill uh, a gap in and do some interesting new new cases. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. I have answered the questions rightly, but um. Uh, oh, I think you. you just... I think you. You probably summed it up well. Is that both the landscapes change, the technology, the user expectations, or the customer demands, and I think that's where 
people like you and me come in handy who don the hat of customer success uh, because our roles becomes evidently more clear in in helping the customers navigate through the through this so uh, the last part of my my question so uh, you know what's your wish list for your customers when it comes to adoption of technology like what's that one thing you would like them to do or change in how they look at technology in every about the four aspects that we've spoken about energy cost resiliency uh custom occupant comfort and and getting people back to office and stuff like that all of those four points that we've spoken and while they're wanting to adopt the technology what's that one thing you would like them to change in terms of their thinking in terms of their execution could be anything yeah uh you must have really like the way you put they push me in the corner but that's good <laughs> they make me reflect and I think no I, I think that's a, another another great question so here and um I would say rather than uh what we wish the customers to change I would say what I would wish we together can make okay. change okay right okay. And I think uh, from our experience of uh, supporting the customers to adopt and get the values of our enterprise software solutions over time, mm. I think uh, one very interesting uh, area is um, sometimes, and that's mo most of the time is is our our part that we think uh, when we uh, signed the contract and sold the products, that's it. Job done. No. But that's no. where the job starts. No, it's not done. It's just yeah. the start and the beginning of the journey with the customers on digitalization mm. for mm. them, right? Mm. Because if you want to be the trusted advisors and partners with your customers in the digital journey with them, mm. you have to support them along the way, okay? But I would say also um, some customers are really good at, uh, okay, we have a team. We, need, we know that we still need to, continue to invest our time and effort together with you guys hmm. in the adopting the solution to the changing needs of their customers, which is the employees, the, the office occupiers, the factory workers, you name it, right? Hmm. Um, uh, but at the same time, some some other customers are at the very beginning of a journey, right? Hmm. So sometimes uh, we'll see situation like um, once they have started using the uh, uh, solution, and we provide training on a solution for them for sure. Uh, we provide, for example, the statistics on how the users are adopting the software or the mobile app or the different solutions mm -hmm. that we're mm -hmm. providing on a regular basis and how to get some insights from those numbers. Sometimes we see some customers are struggling because they mm -hmm. either do not have that right team of oh, people. And when yeah. the right team of people, it's not just the necessary IT people, but the people who made the purchase decision on the solution. And then the change management angle of it, how do you influence change and all of that? Yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Exactly. And also, the, most of the time, we also need to help the customers to engage with uh, other parts of the organization in order to make this digital project a success, like HR, like the change management team, and even sometimes we need to get the C-level to be more proactively engaged and, and support the initiative as well. So, uh, long story short, uh, uh, to to your point, I think uh, we will need to work together with the customers in order to change this change management practice better for everybody. Uh, that's good. So you put you've done well. You've you've uh, sort of ducked, as we say in cricket, uh, you've ducked well to the question. Uh, so that 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 sounds well. okay. So yeah, I mean, th thanks, Alex. It was like wonderful. I mean, just just to recap, I think what the the four points that you're saying is driving across as far as enterprise software adoption is concerned is number one. No, in, probably not in any particular order. Uh, sustainability drive to become net zero, drive your emissions down. Probably resilience for me was one of the most important points. I did not think that would make it to the list, but I'm glad to know that the the uh, you know global accounts are actually looking at resilience thinking about how fm so fm teams operate um and and i think one of the points you mentioned about knowledge retention the fact that a lot of people are are leaving the business and not coming back that actually has been spoken at length but but glad to know that that's coming up as a, a key priority and obviously energy cost and efficiency being there and the last being where you're saying okay how can we add more value to the to the people who 
you know come into the to the to the facility it could be uh, the occupants the tenants and and the people who come into retail outlets like malls and stuff like that so that's that's a that's a recap so you say these are the four trends and and as as a wish list you would say that the suppliers and the consumers of technology both have to go hand in hand because there's a le- there's a lot of uh, navigation that needs to happen uh, before we can su- we can say that we've really led a successful digital transformation because it's also a lot about uh, cultural change to go along with that as well so thanks alex uh, for your time really deeply appreciate i'm sure this is going to be immensely beneficial to the listeners particularly the fm companies who listen to um, i mean who basically serve uh, some of the global service accounts so they can probably pick a, a clue or two from here uh, once again thanks alex uh, really appreciate you uh, taking the time out and talking to us no the pleasure is mine as well and um uh, as you know i just uh, hopefully give some the personal two cents uh, uh, from, from my experience but um hopefully that that that's a that's a that's a uh, continue have this dialogue together now that's absolutely really helpful and uh, to listeners thank you so much for tuning in hope you get the benefit out of it alex is usually active on linkedin you'll have his linkedin profile if you uh, are an emerging startup uh, want to and around in europe uh, and or probably if in london and, and want to catch up alex for coffee or beers please hit him up on linkedin he's an amazing guy to hang out with and and obviously has tons of experience uh, to share and and stories to share thank you so much uh, and uh, take care until next time absolutely take care everyone bye bye